So when I was a kid, I would always look at the uh, the temperature maps and think, okay, it's it's 32 or below, so it's got to snow, right? And then it would come down as rain, and it was like, well, what on earth? What kind of, of, of mischief is this? Well, believe it or not, there's a lot of distance between here at the surface and what goes on up there. And that journey that the rain travels through, that precip travels through, ultimately determines what we see. So let's talk about that. So from where you're standing at the surface, there could be several thousand feet between you and where this droplet starts its journey. And a lot can happen in determining what sort of precipitation you experience at the surface. So think about this. For with rain, it's pretty simple. You've got snow initially, and then it melts through a warm layer all the way to the surface, and you get just a cold rain. Sleet is a little bit different. Once again, it starts at the base of the cloud as freezing precipitation, but then it falls through a warm layer. And as it falls through that warm layer, it turns back into a droplet, it melts. But in this case, you have enough of a freezing layer above the surface that it actually refreezes. And that's why with sleet, you'll get these little pellets. They'll tend to bounce. You'll see those on your hood, your windshield, and they can accumulate as well as these little ice pellets. Now, of course, everybody's favorite is snow, and that one's very self-explanatory too. Whether you're standing at the surface or if you're at the base of the cloud, it's freezing through the entire profile. So then you just get the snow and everybody's happy and beautiful, but then there's the freezing rain. This one is arguably the most detrimental when it comes to really slowing things down. It starts as freezing at the base of the cloud, but then we have this layer in the middle. You call it your sandwich. You have the bread on top, you get freezing there, freezing at, on the other side, but in the middle, it's warm enough to where it melts into a droplet. Well, unlike with sleet, there's not a large enough cold layer at the bottom for this to refreeze. So what does it do? It falls as liquid, but the surface 28 degrees. Now it's freezing on power lines, on trees, on shrubs, on roadways, on bridges, and that's where you get your big issues. So now you understand it doesn't matter what your temperature is at the surface, it matters your atmospheric profile, and that you'll get all sorts of different type of winter weather. That's how it works.